In today's episode of HR Visionaries, we talk to Carla from Datastax. We talk about the company's secret sauce. Stay tuned. Welcome to HR Visionaries, where we unlock the secrets of modern HR. I'm Benjamin, your host. Join us as we shed light on today's HR universe with HR leaders and innovators from across the globe. Whether you're an HR pro, a business leader, or just curious about the future of work, this is your shortcut to the forefront of HR innovation. Brought to you by Hire, the AI talent attraction platform. Welcome to the latest episode of HR Visionaries. I'm looking forward to my guest today, Carla. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. Carla, can you tell us in a few sentences, who are you? Sure. Um, Carla Foster. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I lead talent acquisition for a company called Datastax. Um, Datastax is uh, an, an, a generative AI company. Um, we provide solutions to companies that want to build generative AI applications and solutions. So generative AI, do you think that ever will be a thing? It is a thing. <laughs> Chat GPT, it's, it's funny. It's so amazing if you actually start to interact with some of this stuff. Um, we just actually saw a demo of an, an application that uses our technology that's in Latin America that's helping customers who speak Spanish purchase um, technology that's coming from the U.S., so like laptops and keyboards and things like that. And it's all based on how do I search in Spanish and get this information and I put it in my cart. It's just, that's that's what's happening. It's like being able to think for you in a different way than you having to know the words to search. So it's really cool. Yeah, you, you know what? I uh, So today I sent something to my, to my colleagues and I put... Um, yeah put a comment below. By the way, this was not produced with the help of ChatGPT. So, and I was so <laughs> proud of, of what I achieved. <laughs> but it, it has like, it's, a, great. it's incredible how, how within like um, 15 months, the world has basically completely changed, facilitating like, okay, these, the, the revolution of Gen AI and uh, whoever doesn't use Gen AI is like way behind and it's, it's absolutely well, it's remarkable. A, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just how it's it's helping you be more efficient and effective. You know, we in the world that we live in, you know, you kind of feel like you're drowning every day. There's so much to do. <laughs> and I feel like taking all the stuff that Gen AI can do, you, you get your head above the water. You, you're able to, you know, start to look beyond and and I know that there's concerns about it taking away jobs, but I think it just makes us better because we don't focus on the small stuff that something else can be done. Um, I I do think that they, it will it will make people think a little bit more about you know how do I look into the future, um, and that is scary. I think that's very scary for some, but I I do think it will help us be smarter and more effective people. Okay, okay, it must not be a philosophy, uh, philosophy uh, session here, but I think... Okay, sure. <laughs> um, but, but I think it's actually super interesting in terms of like, we focus less on answers, but more on questions. So it's like the question oh, sure. to ask, rather mm -hmm. than like, hey, let me jump to a conclusion and let me tell you what's right, but more about thinking, okay, hey, how should I shape, shape the question to get the best results? So it's yeah. stunning. Yeah. It's 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 amazing. I I really think it will help us. Yeah, uh, Carla, we will definitely talk about Gen AI um in in, in, in the uh, later part of the of the podcast. Carla, let me um um allow me to ask, why did you uh well why are you an HR leader? Was it a career you 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 envisioned, envisioned yourself to to enjoy, um, or was it like a chance? Yeah, it's it's funny. My um and it's funny that you ask this because it's a conversation that I have with so many candidates, especially when they're earlier in their career, is you know, you know that the path can be anything. Um I have a degree in international economics and Japanese. And coming out of that, I had no what what do I do with that, right? 
um, I happened to take an opportunity to become a recruiter and I learned how to do that. And my path in my career has been, it's a, you know, it's a river that's taken many tributaries and come down to the, in, you know, as I've grown and I am later in my career, it's kind of come back to where I started. It's very interesting. I was a recruiter. Um, I ran a campus program for a long time, but then I decided to get out and I did marketing for 10 years. Um, I went into PR, I went into analyst relations, and then I had an opportunity to come back into recruiting more from an operational perspective. And, um, and then at last I landed here at data stacks and it's just, it's been amazing to take all the learnings that I've had over my career and being able to apply them, not just on how, how I lead a team, but how I help people in the process of looking for opportunities, both internally and externally. I think as a recruiting leader or a talent acquisition leader, you have a responsibility to really look at who's going to work best in your organization. Um, I always say that there's a secret sauce for every company and every company's sauce is different, right? So that secret sauce is what makes you successful within that company. And it's really being able to explain what that secret sauce is, um, inclu is included in that sauce. So then people know that, will I be successful or not? So my job is for me to be able to tell someone, I think you'd be great here or not sure. And, and challenge that and challenge that through our entire leadership and challenge that through candidates. Um, there's a lot of times where I will raise my hand with even senior leader candidates that I'm like, ooh, not sure. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important as we do that because we in the talent space get a view of all these different people and coaches have narrow views. A coach may hire one or two people in a year we're constantly hiring people. So you start to see what works and what doesn't work, what, what's good and what's bad. And it's, it's not good and bad in a binary sense. It's what embodies the sauce for your company. So for me, I think that that's, that's the important part of the job that I lead and how I, how I help the team that I coach and how I help the candidates that come into our organization. Um, I, I just wrote on something that I really like in, in what you just said. So explaining the secret sauce and um, um, that that's kind of the similarity between HR, talent acquisition on, on one side, but also on the other side, marketing, isn't it? There is. I, it, yeah. And sales, right? Yeah. Indeed. I mean, I, th there's an aspect of the selling part that I have. There's an aspect of knowing if someone can is is right for the role and marketing to that, right? So it's, yeah, it's all of those different pieces. So yeah, my, my, all my work over the, of my career encompasses where I've landed today. I, I use all those different pieces. And I think, and I think that's why uh, as, as someone starting earlier in their career, it's like, take the leaps where you need to, because in the end, you'll land where you should be and you'll be able to use all of those learnings over time. So, how can I, as an organization, find out the secret sauce? So, what are the methods? Who do I need to ask? Who do I need to talk to? So, I look at it and say, look at the people that are thriving mm -hmm. in your organization. And when I say thriving, it's not about Are they accomplishing everything? That's an important part, but are they enjoying it? Do they challenge you? Do they walk up and say, hey, I really enjoyed this. However, what if we do something different? Those are people that are thriving because they're thinking beyond where they're at. And then you look at them and say, why are they thriving here? And this person over here seems to be struggling. Maybe they're not as happy. Maybe they're not able to go through that. And so you kind of look at what, what is it in them that makes them that way. And they're typically kind of just different personality traits. And that, and each function within your organization will have differences, but internally 
it's the same. That's where you start to see that secret sauce, that secret sauce of, hey, in order to really thrive here at Data Stacks, you really have to be open to change. You really have to be good at driving forward. That's what you look for. So you start to see and you you ask those questions and it's it's interesting. So you start to help the groups as you go in, you know, as they go into an interview process and tease those things out. Um, you know, it, when I started here four years ago, I didn't know the secret sauce. You know, so it's it's an it's an evolutionary thing. And you know, the sauce has changed too over time as your company gets bigger, as you know, maybe especially with the economy, sometimes it slows down and you know, people people get a little nervous. And so you you really have to know how and and internally even as um HR or people people, it's about how do how do I uplift the people mm -hmm. who really embody that? How do I put them in the forefront? So everybody wants to strive for that too. I think it's, it's incredibly important what you just, uh, just said. So in terms of like, identify those people who, who thrive, put them um, in those positions where they can lead by example um, for those who, who perhaps don't for whatever reason. And, um, and, and then, um, well, uplift the entire organization. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about seeing a peer that you you know you you want to be like or seeing a peer that you're like, "Wow, let me ask them a question because I seem to be struggling with this and keeping an open environment." Um there's also a level of authenticity that you have to have, right? And I think that's really important in any organization is making sure that you, you, me as a leader, I'm authentic, um, you know, within myself and to the team that I coach. So when I'm struggling, I, I let them know, hey, I'm struggling here. Uh, because then it becomes a less of, oh, gosh, you know, I didn't realize you struggled the same thing as I struggle with, you know, we all struggle, we're all human beings. Um, and being able to be authentic in that is really important, because that's when I really think you start to see the innards of people, and you know, you, you know them, you know them better. It also shows that, well, showing vulnerability and, well, um, well, not knowing everything. Well, it's kind of like also every, everyone knows that already, right? So everyone knows that not, not everyone knows everything. There. So therefore, right. it's, it's an, it, it, it opens up a completely different, different level of communication there. Yeah, and you're, we're always learning. Uh, um, you know, I, I think even, even as you go throughout your career and you fe feel like, oh, I, you know, I've, I've done this for a long time. Um, oh, I love it when people challenge me. I, I mean, I probably am one of the hardest people to challenge because I, I'm very convicted. I have strong convictions and I can come across like, hey, like, challenge me. And, but I, I do love being challenged and making me raise my bar at any given time. That's, that's amazing. Cause you, you always want to do that. And, you know, I think as to, to circle back to the original comp, you know, as we started this, I think one of our biggest challenges is accepting some of the things that are going to change in our world, especially in TA, you know, this AI, what's going to happen. And, you know, it's challenging. It's starting to think about how do I do things differently? And, and being able to just sit back and embrace that challenge and go, okay, let's 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 figure out how we do this. How do you challenge someone uh, with very strong opinions? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, you have to be I a really good listener. Question. Yeah, no, no, I think it's 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 totally fine. I I think you have to be a good listener. Um, if you're, if, if I'm, I'm a strong person and I'm challenging someone who's just as convicted as I am, then it's, it's my responsibility to pause and listen and say, okay, I need to really hear them. And I need to understand where their perspective is. Otherwise it can just, it feels like you're constantly butting heads mm -hmm. and that doesn't, 
you got to step away and step out and zoom out at that point because there's no value in that from my perspective you you can in any situation agree to disagree Mm -hmm. but the key in that is ensuring that what's the next step even though you agree to disagree what are you doing as a next step you can't just kind of keep it you know where you're at somebody's got to move or someone has to make a decision right so you go i mean that's it's relationships, right? And we have it all the time. <laughs> You're parking a car and somebody wants to go in your space and you want to go in that space. Somebody's got to give. At, at some point, you have to just make that decision. It's going to be a very long process, shopping trip, right? <laughs> exactly. You could be circling along for a really long time. But I mean, at some point, you just got to give, right? And I'm not saying you give all the time, right? But you gotta pick those ones that you're really convicted with and 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 fight for it but ultimately a decision is going to be made um well as a as an particular leader in town acquisition you said, said something really cool before so um like the the openness of uh, telling candidates or applicants hey this is perhaps not for you um <clears throat> this um the can you can you tell us a bit more about this how you how you approach it because i i 100 agree with you it's it's so incredibly important to manage expectations early um telling people hey we had a conversation great person but you, you won't be happy here yeah it is a lot just saying that right and it's a lot of so I I do tend to use humor in those kind of conversations because it I think it's you have to lighten a, a little bit of the mood. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes when I'm coming into a, a candidate that I'm recruiting um, versus them coming to me, I I set it up in a way that says, "Listen, I'm going to tell you about this role. I'm going to tell you about this opportunity, but if it's not." the right fit for you, it's okay. I take rejection well. And so they it, it creates a level of, okay, I can say no, mm-hmm. right? Because I think it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. Someone's reached out to you or you're going in and maybe you've even applied to a role and all of a sudden you're in it and you're going, oh gosh, I don't know. Someone, you know, like, oh, ah, don't know if this is the right thing. And being able to create a really safe space for someone to go, mm, I don't think this is the right space for you. They're good. You know, most people are like, you can see the relief. You can feel it in, in their conversation. It's just like, okay, I don't have to put myself in that position or I don't have to feel like I'm selling myself into something that maybe it isn't right for me. I usually give people when, when I'm, when I'm kind of unsure about somebody in, in an initial conversation, my go-to is, hey, I really want you to think about this because it gives them that out. I, I let them go out of the conversation and I say, I need you to take a couple of days and really think about this. Good percentage of the time, people will opt out because it's the cue of saying, hey, it's, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta dig deep. Some people don't, and that there's a drive there that you're gonna go. Ooh, I like that drive, so you kind of take on that and see if if that drive is really gonna help them be successful. But you know, humor is a really good way of just making people feel really. <laughs> it was like, okay, I feel okay now, right? Uh, I, I don't agree. Uh, well, kind of, is is that something you came up with? I really like this idea of well telling tell people very very early in the process hey i can have rejection so that's it's actually pretty cool that reminds me a bit of uh, of sales techniques right so in terms of like okay if you if you want to sell some someone something you have to tell some you'll have to tell them as well hmm, yeah we have to see whether we fit together but in talent acquisition that makes a lot of sense indeed yeah i i i I don't i don't recall reading it in a book it just kind of comes over time right you know you you talk to enough people. And again, I, I will default to humor in a lot of things. I also start a conversation, every conversation that I have with a candidate, 
I ask them about their day or I ask them about the weekend or I ask them about something personal because I think it it creates this relationship that I'm having with you because I am building a relationship. And there are individuals that I talk to. Um, I talked, I reached out to a gentleman just yesterday. I spoke to him a year ago. He was early in his career. And I remembered him because of the relationship that we talked about. He didn't end up coming to data stacks, but I had an opportunity. So I was like, Hey, I'm going to reach out to this guy. Maybe he remembers me. Maybe he doesn't. Most of the time they remember because you've, you've created a connection with somebody. And I think those connections are really important, not only just for the job that we do, but most of the time we spend is at a job. So it's nice to just know that other people are out there. They're having a coffee, you know, it's all good. I, I think it's important to leave people with just a, a good feeling, you know, no one wants to be told that, you know, they suck. And sometimes they, you know, they just don't. So there's ways of saying, mm, yeah, you're not really, you kind of suck here. You don't have to say that, you know, you can tell, you can do it in a different way that doesn't, you know, doesn't involve like, Hey, I'm going to reject you. Um, I'm just going to be really nice and go, this isn't the right thing for you. That's okay. I think you're amazing. Right. I, I, I really, uh, <laughs> really like this approach. Um, Carla, um, now that, uh, that, well, everyone talks about generative AI um, and it's like the big thing, perhaps not the next big thing because we're already in the gen AI revolution. Does it make your life easier that everyone loves gen AI now? As a recruiting and team, it yeah, it it, it exactly. helps. So sorry, right? I was very yeah. precise. Indeed. So from a recruiting, no, no, no. From the yeah, as a recruiting team, it's helpful. Um, yeah, it, I mean, we're we're able to, I think, attract more than we have in the past. So we're on that. Hey, we're on the cool. We're on the cool kids bus, right? That's it's it's fun to be on the bus. Um, at the same time, you know, I still have to hire tax people. Or, you know, accounting people and they're like, eh, Gen AI doesn't make any difference to me. So it, it depends on who you're going after. It can help in some ways. At the same time, it's also everybody thinks they understand what Gen AI is. So they think that because they, they've put it down or they've taken a class or they've done something, hey, I, I can do this. And you're like, maybe not. Yeah. maybe you can so it does it does help us it does in a way it you know being on the cool bus is fine yeah indeed yeah. indeed um that uh well makes uh, makes things different um but um how how are things then in, in general for you in, in, in an environment where well suddenly this becomes like the topic everyone talks about like four years ago there was like so when you joined the company it it, it probably must have felt very different. So like, okay, um, a bit like you know, fusion energy, right? So, okay, some when this will, this will happen. And, and then we had those, well, revolutions on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, in tech, this stuff happens so fast, mm -hmm. right? You know, cloud and it, it just, it, you, you know, it was, it was a year ago for us where we were like, oh, we're, we're pivoting and we're pivoting fast. And every, you know, the entire company just did that. And so it, yeah, I, um, this one's a hard one for me to answer. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to edit this out because I don't really. You know. I'm not sure I understood the question. I was trying to go, mm, okay. I'm, like, I'm not sure. Can, can I can I rephrase the question? Please, please. Okay, so okay, Rice, I will have so much fun with editing. This. I know. Uh, <laughs> so, so. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like jokes. Um. So um. um okay. Um, okay, Raisa, we continue here. Um. Uh, poor Raisa is uh, having. Oh, she she's she's out out this week and and, and there's so much work waiting for her. Uh, so oh, good. Uh, yeah, but she's doing and more today. Just... Yeah, <laughs> indeed. But, but she's she's doing such a lovely job. Um, oh, right. Um, 
Okay, I have a good idea how to put this. Um, so, um, Pala, what, what, I, what I don't understand is a bit like, okay, so now you are the cool kids, um, cool bus. However, four years ago when you joined, um, things were perhaps a bit different, right? So, so like Gen AI was not something that everyone um, talked about, something that perhaps many people also kind of including me, felt a bit like, okay, it's just years down the road. How did working with people, attracting people for a company um, um, like a data strike felt back then compared to now? So Honestly, when you have to sell a bit of the yeah. vision, perhaps, yeah. right? Rather yeah. than like, you, okay, you're part you of a revolution, but uh, first of all, okay, you have to build up stuff and then there will be a revolution and um, shiny fields before us. Yeah. To me, it's more about, um, I don't know if it feels any different. It mm -hmm. just, it may be just slightly a little bit, not easier, but just like, hey, people, People are more interested in, in the buzzwords today than the buzzwords, you know, four years ago. Attracting people and, and recruiting people to me is about getting them excited about your mission, whatever mm -hmm. mission that is. And if you're able to do that, they're on the mission. So that mission is going to, you know, it's, it's, it's the river that kind of turns all the time, right? So you, you recruiting is about getting people excited that you want to be a part of our mission and that that's just an evolution of that you know the mission doesn't change the buzzwords change because we're on the same <laughs> mission right that's really it um so what did uh, convince you to join um so one of the leaders um at data stacks her name is molly tejwani and Mala, um, Mala and I talked and first, um, this is a person who is much earlier in her career than I was at the time. Um, I mean, it's only four years, but she still is earlier in her career than me, but she is absolutely amazing. Um, and in fact, just the other day, I told her that there's not a day that goes by that she doesn't amaze me. And it's, for me, it's about being around people that are really going to challenge you and make you better. And I saw that and I, and oh my, she challenges me and she has challenged me. And there's some days where you get to, you, you think, oh, I don't really want to be challenged today. I really don't. <laughs> today is not a good day for challenging but there's goodness in that challenge. There's being better. And that's what I love. And I saw that in her. I saw that in Chet, who is our CEO. They're looking for everybody just to be better every day. Just how, how do you, how do you raise that bar? Um, and I was asked, how, how do I make a world-class recruiting team? How, how do I drive this? So every day I ask myself, is this world-class? And every time you feel like you're getting closer, there's another bar that goes up. And so you're just constantly doing it. And that's the part I love. I love the fact that no one's telling me, oh gosh, you guys just get to sit on your laurels. No, it's fun to be challenged. Now is it, it's not for everybody and that's okay. But yeah, that's, that's why I just, um, the leadership and there's a level of authenticity here. I mean, at data stacks, we get to be who we are. Um, there's, you know, there's F-bombs that are dropped every once in a while. Sometimes it's good. You know, sometimes you're in the, and it's just, you feel like, oh, you got to be yourself because of that. That's good. You want people to feel like I get to just be my authentic self. So that's why. It sounds like a very uplifting culture, uh, so like challenging, but not in a destructive, but a constructive way. It is. But it's hard because we're a startup and the the challenging piece is someone explained to me early on when I started is that working for a Czech company is like sprinting a marathon. And and that's how you feel. You feel like you're sprinting all the time. 
and you're thinking, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming to that 26 mile. And then all of a sudden they make it like the 100 <laughs> mile marathon or whatever it is. You're like, oh, I'm tired. It, but you have to have that inner drive. So it's um, not every day do I feel uplifted. And most of that's because of me. It's not because of the surroundings. It's like, you get tired. It's hard. Um, but I do believe that in every job that you have, so much of your joy and drive is internal. And it, when it becomes external, like you don't like it anymore, it shows. And you need to choose something else. Yeah. Carla, can you tell us a bit about your um, your outlook for HR for the next few years? So uh, we talked about Gen AI that I, I'm pretty sure it will be perhaps the driver for innovation in, um, in, in, in the HR and recruiting space. But can you tell something in addition to Gen AI that it may be relevant? <laughs> It was a surprise. Well, I, yeah, I don't, I, it's hard for me not to incorporate the Gen AI. And, and here's why. I, I believe we will have access in the people world to so much more information. I think, and, and how that information is presented to us will be so different than what it's been presented and how, how we visualize it, what we get to see about the people who are a part of our teams. And that's what makes me excited about the Gen AI and just the data in itself. I, I think that HR teams have struggled with how, how people, how you feel people. It's, it's a feelings kind of role. Like this person feels bad. This person feels good. And for me, I think we need to use data more and less about our feelings. And what does the data tell us? What, how are people succeeding? What's going on? And, and using more of that to drive the businesses that we support. Because I think that's it's less about how I personally feel and more about what's really going on and taking that information and and being a business partner versus just kind of like, I'm going to be your friend. You know, friendships are good, but in order to help a business grow, I think you really need to understand it. So for me, it's the Gen AI, but it's also, let's take, take advantage of all the stuff that's out there to really understand your business, right? Carla, thank you so much. It was amazing talking to you. It was a yes. great fun. And I think everyone well understands that if you like to start and end with jokes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, I'm not a stand-up comedian. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you, you certainly have the potential of Oh, do I, do I, um, I don't know about that, but I appreciate the, appreciate the confidence that's in me. Um, I have, I, my family, we, we do, in, um, I have two kids and my husband, and there is a level of when, uh, sarcasm, sarcasm is hot in our family. So it's, you know, the level that you can kind of keep going in, in sarcasm is, it's, you know, it kind of gets you up there like, hey, you're, you're thriving. So. I, I think I use that too. <laughs> Lovely. Mm -hmm. Carla, thanks again so much. Yeah. It was great talking to you. It uh, was, was great you. input and very uplifting. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And thanks for you guys listening in and see you next time.